Wow, that was really powerful. What an important lawsuit and those amazing defendants. And we have the most, I'm gonna have a little drink here now, my drink. We have a wonderful panel for you tonight, all people involved with the making of the documentary. Christy Cooper, wave your hand. Christy Cooper is the director, writer, and producer of Youth v. Gov. She's also an Emmy Award winning cinematographer with a PhD in neuroscience and an MS in microbiology. Phil Gregory is the co-lead counsel in the Kids Constitutional Climate Case, Juliana versus United States. That's the official name of the case. And he has a complex business and environmental litigation practice. And he's been actively involved with our Children's Trust on a pro bono basis since 2010. Olivia Animan, producer of the film, is joining us all the way from New Zealand. Other films she's produced include The Cove, The Human Element, and Racing Extinction. Brilliant, all of them. And finally, we're thrilled to have Levi Draheim here with us. Levi is the youngest of the plaintiffs. He is now 13 and he lives in Florida. Welcome everybody. And I wanna start off with you, Phil Gregory, your co-counsel for the youth. What is the current status of the lawsuit? Jane, if you remember from the movie that about the civil rights litigation in Brown versus Board of Education. And in Brown, the first ruling they got from the Supreme Court was that they uh, wanted declaratory relief. So right now we are seeking to amend our complaint before Judge Aiken in Eugene, Oregon to seek declaratory relief of the constitutional right to a climate capable of sustaining human life. We're also going to be petitioning the Supreme Court to review the Ninth Circuit order. And finally, we're hoping to convince the Biden administration to not employ the tactics of the Trump administration in this litigation, but rather to sit down with the youth and find out where there's common ground so that we can begin to solve this climate crisis from the youth's perspective, not the perspective of politicians. I wonder if you know what just happened in Germany. G Germany's highest court has ruled just now in a landmark decision that the government's climate policies are insufficient because they lack detailed emission reduction targets beyond 2030. And the court said that the country's climate action law violates the freedoms of young people, which is, of course, a, a major victory to climate activists who filed the complaint. Maybe that will augur well for your suit? Do you think there's any relationship? Well, you know, Jane, our judiciary is definitely behind the curve. Germany, the Netherlands, numerous other, the Pakistan, they all recognize the importance of climate rights, particularly for future generations. And so hopefully our judiciary will read these other decisions and wake up and, be, and uh, uh, adopt a courageous, a role in solving the climate crisis. Thank you for that. Levi, how did you get involved as a plaintiff and why did you think that this was the way to create change? So um, <clears throat> the way I got involved was actually pretty interesting. So the minister at my Unitarian Universalist church, um, he's always followed all the things that our children trust uh, does. And when he heard about the lawsuit, he um, told my mom because uh, he knew that I had always been uh, big in uh, protesting when there was fish kills, which were due to uh, rising temperatures. And then people would put more fertilizer on the lawn, which causes algae blooms in the Indian River Lagoon. Um, and so I would always do like, look, I would do protests and I would go to marches, rallies. Um, and he heard about the lawsuit. And he just told my mom like offhandedly and she did um, some research about it just to see what it was about. And when she realized that um, there was opportunities for uh, kids to take action and take things into their own hands, she asked me if I wanted to join the lawsuit and she told me what it would entail. Um, she didn't realize how long this would take, but uh, I just immediately said, yeah, I want to do this because 
I knew how, when, like, I really knew how big of a problem climate change was. I felt like I, there was nothing that I could do that was big enough to uh, fight it. And so when I heard about the lawsuit and how big it was, I knew that that was um, a big way to take action. And what, uh, what, what, what better way to take big action than suing the United States government? Thank you so much. I'm so grateful for your mom and your courage. Thank you. Um, and one thing, Jane, I wanna point out is I've been practicing for over 40 years and each of these youth, rather than sitting down playing video games or goofing off, they're all out there. Each of these plaintiffs, they're the best clients I've ever had. They're sitting for deposition by the Department of Justice. They're attending court hearings. They're testifying before Congress. They're amazing youth and they should be an admiration for their generation. Yeah, you can see in the film, they're really paying attention. Absolutely. Hard to pay attention to legalese. <laughs> Olivia, as producer, what were the challenges in making the film? Um, you know, all documentaries have challenges at different stages of production. And I think with this one, it was deciding when we were ready to stop filming and to go into post-production with a story and a lawsuit that's ongoing and um, has been for five years. At some point, you just have to decide the times now to get this film out there and to share the story. So that was one challenge of knowing when you know, how far do we follow the story? How much more did we need to get to a finishing point? And I think we, you know, we, we got there, um, but it's very hard to let go of a story that's still in um, progress. And we hope to, you know, follow when these kids get to go to trial. Um, we'd like to continue filming and see where, how the case evolves. So it's not necessarily totally finished. That's why it hasn't been released yet. Um, well, the film for now is finished and we are actively looking for distribution for the film so it can be widely available. Um, in the meantime, we're playing a lot of film festivals and doing screenings like here, which is awesome. Um, but I think if the, if the trial, if the case goes to trial, we would love to follow the story all the way through. Yeah. I, I told uh, Leonardo DiCaprio that we were going to be showing this on movie night. And, and he said, oh, I, yes, I, I helped finance it. Was he blowing smoke or did he really put money into it? Or do you not know? He didn't put money into the film. He put money into the litigation. Into the so litigation, he, right? Yeah. yeah, he put a lot of money into the litigation. It was a big, big boost. Yeah, he's, he's a righteous soldier. And Olivia, how, how do you hope that the film is going to create change? Tell us, tell us about your impact campaign and how films can be used to create real change on the ground. Well, we hope that this film, you know, makes um, more people aware of the story about the Juliana versus the U.S. Um, lawsuit, as well as what the U.S. government has actively been doing to perpetuate climate, the climate crisis in this country for years with our impact, I should say decades, actually. And with our impact campaign, our goal is to support youth in holding their government accountable on climate change. Mm -hmm. um, so we would like to, in you know, not only um, inspire youth, but give them tools to learn how to become, you know, engaged in civics and engaged in politics um, and how they can make a change like Levi and his fellow plaintiffs are with this lawsuit. But there are plenty of other ways that young people can stand up and um, demand change and accountability from their local, state and federal governments. Hmm. There's a question from a member of our audience um, wanting to know, how can the Fire Drill Fridays community support your film? Chrissy, do you want to take that one? Chrissy. Sure. Um, I, you know, it, people can follow, um, can sign up on our website. Um, it's youthegovfilm.com. Um, and we, you know, we're, we, we're already starting to do some of this um, impact work during our festival run, working with young people and some educational screenings. But when we are able to fully launch this impact campaign that we're really excited about and we hope will really be broad and reaching, that's where we really hope that the audience members that are excited by this film 
everyone can, can, can join in. They can be a part of their communities holding their governments accountable, whether it's their local school board, their, you know, local city and council members, or, you know, our president and, and the, um, the executive branch. So that, that's, that's one of the best ways that they can work together with us on our, on our impact campaign. And of course, we're, um, we're, you know, we, we also would encourage people, folks to go to our children's trust and um, they can always help out with the lawsuit by, by writing amicus briefs and, um, you know, groups can get together and write those and follow the, the case. There's also seven current state cases around the country right now where folks can get engaged and support those youth plaintiffs as well. Great answer. Thank you. And I'm going to ask you another question. Why, why do you believe that this case is a, an authentic social vision, one where our, our government needs to commit with long-term conviction and deliberation? Yeah, I, you know, I, I have been following these climate litigations for the past 10 years. And I, I think what I, in the, over the course of following these stories, I think what I've learned most is about the importance of our third branch of government, which I think a lot of people often forget when they're thinking about how our government works and our judicial system is there. It's the checks and balances. You know, our, our courts are supposed to protect our citizens from government harm. And uh, I, this is absolutely critical to our democracy and to how our constitution functions. And I think they play, they have a big role to play in helping us to solve this problem. And, you know, as we showed in the, in the film, you know, these decades of government knowledge and direct action of supporting and propping up the, the fossil fuel industry, uh, this, I think without this systemic change of what's needed to, to, to get us off of fossil fuels, to get us off of fossil fuels being the you know, the generator of our economy and, and our energy system. Without doing that, I, I, don't, I don't know how we're gonna create that, that larger change. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I, this, this case feels so different to me. It's not that typical whack-a-mole approach of taking down this pipeline and that coal-fired power plant and that fracking company. This is the whole shebang. <laughs> yeah. But let's not let up on the whack-a-moles. No, absolutely. That's all needed. And I, you know, I was... I was on a panel recently with Reverend Yearwood, um, and I, I just, I really love, he said on this panel that um, demonstration without litigation and, um, how did he say that? Dem demonstration without litigation and legislation leads to frustration. So I'm a firm believer that we need activism on all fronts. We need people in the streets. We need people, you know, holding their legislators accountable. We need people suing the government or suing the fossil fuel industries. Like it's all part of the, of the complete package. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Thank you for that. Levi, what's it been like suing the world's most powerful government? Well, well suing the world's most powerful government is, it can be really intimidating. Um, just knowing like the fact that you're fighting such a big government and it just is like, it can, can be very intimidating and um, it can be very, it's very, very hard at times. And it just is really important to stay confident and stay strong. Um, and when like I have trouble with like, it being such a big thing for me. Um, I just think about like my baby sister or uh, I think about all the be beautiful places that I've visited um, in, in nature and know that I need to be able to keep on fighting to protect the places that I love and the people that I love so much. What a beautiful answer, thank you. Thank you, Levi. Phil, um, the film draws a parallel between the plaintiff's actions and as you said, the, the actions of the civil rights activists in Brown versus Board of Education. Do you think that the courts will ultimately provide impetus for the government to address the climate crisis as they did um, with Brown versus Board of Education um, for segregation? Or, or have the courts changed in ways that will make them ineffective as a means for addressing climate change? What do you think? Well, Jane, you know, that's an excellent question because in the civil rights movement, it took momentum from below. It took a lot of people, as we, as we said earlier,
doing demonstrations. It took a lot of people uh, uh, out on the streets to get the Warren court to issue the decision in Brown versus Board of Education. And we believe that it's not just civil rights, it's uh, rights such as uh, uh, equal um, marriage. It's, there are various rights that the courts eventually get to. And right now, the climate is a prominent feature in the news media, for the politicians and the like. So we believe that the courts are finally going to turn to a climate crisis and begin to address it. And the best way that that's going to occur is because we have a tremendous amount of evidence, not only that the federal government has known, but the federal government through its systemic conduct is actually causing, substantially contributing to the climate crisis. And the courts will recognize that this federal government conduct, as well as state government conduct, local government conduct, it needs to stop and it needs to stop quickly. And the politicians don't have the will to do what needs to be done, to do what the evidence is telling them they have to do. Paris Agreement is not gonna be enough. They have to work quicker. That's what all the scientists say. So right now the courts need to step up and I believe that they will have the will based on the evidence and based on the precedent to do what's necessary to begin to make the change to help solve the climate crisis, not only for these children, but as the constitution says, to secure the blessings of liberty for our posterity. Beautiful, thank you. Thank you for that answer. Um, Levi, let's get superficial for a minute. I've been, I've been making movies for 60 years in other words, I can go to a movie and see what I was like when I was like 20. It's really weird. So you're, you're five years older now than you were when you, when you first were in this movie. What, is that, what does that feel like to look at yourself back then? Well, it, it's super strange. And I don't remember all the little things that like when I watched the movie, my mom would constantly like, oh, remember when you used to do this all the time? And I was like, no, I don't remember that. And I guess it just brings back memories of me being younger, which is not that much younger, but it still is, is you're right. It's very strange to see yourself uh, when you're younger. And it's pretty cool to be able to say that I am in a movie. Are you still climbing up the trunks of trees and you'll still climb a lot? Yeah, I definitely will climb up the trunks of trees. And uh, right. I scare my grandmother a lot because uh, I'll climb up trees to get coconuts down and they'll climb onto the roof and use a machete to, cut to, to chop coconuts down. It terrifies my grandmother. My mom just goes, take a picture and then walk away. <laughs> I'm not sure how much uh, more time we have, um, but uh, let me ask whoever wants to answer this. How were the plaintiffs chosen? I mean, what, <clears throat> what role did the Children's Trust play in finding the plaintiffs? What, what criteria were used to recruit them? Well, Jane, I'll just come to you. And then I, uh, I'd be interested in Christy, uh, contributing to this, but as Levi said earlier, he came in through his minister. Other plaintiffs uh, were climate activists. They heard about the type of litigation our Children's Trust was doing, not only at the federal level and at the state level, but it's also doing work at the international level. So there's a large social media network of uh, climate youth. And uh, so they contacted one another. And then we you know, looked at various people who were suffering various injuries. If you remember from the discussion in the movie about standing and the first, I'll call it general segment of the film, it's all about how are these plaintiffs suffering injuries? So we looked in the Southwest for Jamie, Hawaii for Journey, Alaska for Nathan, uh, uh, New York, we went to Vic, 
uh, Florida for Levi. So we needed injuries around the nation because it's a national systemic problem. And then finally, we wanted uh, uh, people who were prepared to, uh, I'm gonna call it stay the course. And, uh, and we had people like Jaden in uh, Louisiana who not only suffered injury in the course of the case through the uh, flooding of her home, but she became more resolute as a plaintiff that she mm. really believed in the litigation, believed in her fellow plaintiffs. And uh, as a result, our plaintiffs were chosen uh, uh, not really knowing how long the case would last, but they've proven to be remarkable individuals and remarkable representatives of their generation. Mm. I would also add that um, in part of the, the beginning process, Kelsey, um, she, she originally sued her state government. So she's a plaintiff in, or in an Oregon state case. Mm -hmm. And she was, that was back in 2011. And so she was kind of a, you know, a climate, a youth climate leader in her community. And I, I think a lot of the Oregon plaintiffs were inspired by Kelsey and found out about the case through her. And then there's Shita Scott Martinez from, from Colorado, who is an environmental hip hop artist. And, you know, he was traveling around the country already at that point and giving concerts and talking about um, environmental activism. And he was a, also a plaintiff on the Colorado case at that time. Um, so there was, you know, some of these of these kids started back in 2011 and were really, um, I think, influential peers to other young people around the country who found out, out about the case through them. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating. Well, this is, a, it's a remarkable movie and I salute all of you for, for your contribution to it. And I pray that it's, it's going to achieve what, what you want. And I think our Fire Drill Friday community will help in whatever way we can. Um, I think it's kind of late on the East Coast um, and it's, it's been a, a long evening. So we're going to say, we're going to say good night and I will see you the last Thursday of May for our next movie night. Stay safe. Thank you so much.